Hi all, G-Rex here. I just wanted to let you know that this is part two of Susie's story. I hope you enjoy it, and thanks for coming back. Bye. And if it does ever get to a point where it is like getting to be too much and I feel like I'm going to have what some might consider my breakdown, I don't cry a lot. I'm not a person who cries a lot unless it's a movie where an animal dies and then I'm bawling my face off. But you're so innocent. (laughs) Yeah. Like, like, why? (laughs) So in that instance, like if I need a good cry, I need to let out some emotions maybe I've held in for too long or something, then we do our good shower cry where no one sees us. <laughs> I'm out feeling great afterwards. And then I move on. Or I talk to a therapist, but I mean, you know, yeah. That's just yeah. obvious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for me, that's become just your... obvious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wonder if you like think when you're crying in the shower, like, oh, like, do you start analyzing yourself? Like, oh, this has got to be related to that. And like, you become your own therapist. Sure do. Every time. So I do a lot of self-reflecting because it it is something that works best for me. When I met with a therapist quite a couple of years ago, she was like, whenever you have that inner critic in your head that's saying whatever, or you get to that point where you're crying, look at that moment and ask yourself, how can I reframe this? So yeah. for example, if like at work, someone really upset me for some reason, I got to look at, okay, what is it about this moment that's making me upset? Oh, well, it's reminding me maybe something that happened in my own personal life. And so that might be why I'm upset. One time I was talking to someone who was like talking about hurting their neighbor's dog. And I was so angry and upset about it. And I'm like, why am I angry and upset about it? Oh, because I love dogs. Yeah. Dogs over people. That's just how I feel. <laughs> so, I was angry with him. That It made me upset. And yeah. I had to reframe. Okay, why am I upset? What's happening? Oh, and then I check in with myself. Yeah. And that was a huge tool for me when I went to therapy. It was the same thing was checking in. Because I had I thought I was always very grounded in who I was. And I was very probably emotionally attached, right? Like I knew what was happening to me and I could analyze that and kind of be okay with it. But not really knowing why something was triggering me, that I had to learn that. And once I was able to learn that and really dive to the underneath, like what is it about this thing that is upsetting me? It was huge. It was such a huge tool. And you have, like for me, I have to practice that almost every single day or I'll lose sight of it. So I have to like make the effort. Like, why is this upsetting me? And really dive into it. So when I talk with callers on the crisis line, depending on their, what level they're at in our call, I always try to introduce a safety plan and establishing our triggers in our warnings is the number one thing we talk about. And I might spend way too long of a time period talking about that. But to me, it's like when we did, when we determine exactly what it is that is making us feel whatever way you're feeling in that moment, now we can figure out, okay, how do we meet that when that experience happens again? Mm -hmm. And what tool do we need to use in order to move forward? And I think that's one of the things that I appreciate the most about that job, this job, my job, is creating that plan with someone because they don't necessarily look at those things for themselves. And when they have to sit with it, that's when they're like, oh gosh, I didn't know chewing big red gum would lead to me having a mental breakdown, but I remember it from my childhood, you know? So it's like something so simple that it's like the smell of cinnamon makes me think of this because of this big red gum. I know the weird one, but listen, I've heard everything. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but it it's true. And that's such a huge, they can take that with them after that call. Yeah. Every day you can use that yeah. and you become to learn and maybe hopefully one day wisen up to some of your triggers and, and know how, how you're going to react or be able to control it. So yeah. yeah.
It's very important to recognize those things. And it does sometimes take an outside person to help you see it. Oh, yeah, 100%. Because when I had my breakdown, nobody knew. Nobody. I was perfectly fine on the outside. And the inside, not so much. But, you know, the thing that I learned, and, you know, I'm a big proponent for it right now, is I wasn't taking care of myself. I was so busy taking care of everybody else's shit that I didn't take care of myself. Like, self-care and self-love, it's no joke. Like, you have to take care of yourself. And as a true empath, that was very hard for me because, you know, I had been in customer service for years. You know, my customers were always come first. I would jump through hoops for them. But when it came to taking care of my own shit, no. But the the biggest thing I did learn through therapy is boundaries, right? Like now if it smells like drama, don't fucking come near me because you get a big old (laughs) can of black spray paint. Oh, no, I can't see it now. We're good. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... It's the way to be healthy for yourself, right? Mental health, it's practicing how to take care of yourself. Absolutely. And like people always say like, oh, you know, we got to create boundaries, right? And that's one thing that I think a lot of people are very unfamiliar with. What does it mean to create a boundary? And something that I've had to express to a lot of callers is when you're establishing a boundary, it cannot look like a request. It can't be oh, if you keep blowing up my phone after 10 p.m., then I'm not going to talk to you. Okay, that sounds like a request. Yeah. (laughs) Because you're saying, if you keep blowing up my phone after 10 p.m., you're not going to talk to me. Well, but you'll talk to me tomorrow. So like, okay, then it sounds like a request. Whereas setting a boundary is, if you text me after 10 p.m., I'm going to block your phone number and we will not be in contact anymore. Oh, so mm-hmm. you can talk to me until 10 p.m. But after 10 p.m., I, I don't want to hear from you. And if you keep crossing that boundary, then I'm going to have to block you and we can't be friends anymore. That is a boundary. That's establishing what it is I expect from you. And if you cross it, this is the repercussion of you crossing that boundary. And I... Right. Sorry to help caller see it. That's probably not the greatest example, but it's the only one I can think of at the moment. <laughs> yeah. No, I had to learn it. And I, I think I always like knew what a boundary was, right? But one of the hardest and also literally one of my breaking, like my aha moments in therapy was setting a boundary with a very close family member who I was, I don't want to say if I was afraid to set a boundary with them. I just grew up thinking it was never possible, right? So here I am as an adult realizing I need to do this for me because it's a non-negotiable. Like if I don't set this boundary, whatever it is, whenever this thing comes up, I'm going to be incredibly uncomfortable and depressed about it. So I knew, okay, you got to do this. Set it up, had the conversation, stood firm, was all like, (laughs) you know, like shaky and nervous. (laughs) But I set the boundary and they they respected it. They tried it once. They tried to break through. <laughs> they the all just once. want to try it once. And I was like, sorry. <laughs> like I didn't even Good no more you. conversation. Yes. Needed, right. But I remember having the very initial conversation, setting the boundary, hanging up the call. My husband came into the room and he's like, are you okay? Cause he knew it was going to be really difficult. And just feeling like I could breathe. Like I was like, oh my gosh, like the weight of the world, like just getting lifted off. And that's when I realized it's important to set boundaries because if you are making yourself uncomfortable to benefit somebody else's bullshit, like you don't have to, you like, I had the option, the ability and the choice to do that. And I did it. And it was like huge. Absolutely, I'm like, oh yeah, you've got to do it. Yeah. And I think a lot of people think that they can just set a boundary about anything. And some boundaries are very silly. (laughs) Yeah. Like some are just silly. Like if we are friends in a group and all of us are friends together and then two friends decide to not like each other and they're like, well, if you invite this person, I'm not coming. That's my boundary. (laughs) That's silly. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to invite whoever I want. And if you don't want to come, 
okay then, but you're not going to put that on me. That is right, right, that is silly. That's on my boundary. That's your, that's your boundary. Yeah. You just don't have to come. Right. That's fine. But you're not going to give an ultimatum <laughs> between people, okay? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Ultimatums and boundaries. Yeah, like, um, there's a huge difference there. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's so funny. It's so true, though. <laughs> like, for me, like, my boundaries are, it's like, if it smells like drama, like, I just, I don't want it anymore. You know, I'm at that age where I went from 59 to 60. I mean, the minute I turned 60, I was like, mm, I don't fucking care anymore. Okay. Because I don't. <laughs> but my advice to you guys is like, don't wait until you're 60 yeah. to get there. Right. Do it in your, what, your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s. Right. It's very freeing, though. Extremely yeah. freeing. And I I find that I sleep better, that I connect better with people. And I just don't let that outside shit tell me how to live my life. Right. And for me, that is the most perfect thing ever. Because yeah. I just feel better. I feel better on the inside. Yeah, I still go to therapy twice a week. But damn, I feel good. And I'm thankful to be alive. So thankful to be alive. Yeah. And I think that knowing that you're a person who benefited from utilizing 988 helps spread so much more confidence to others that it is a safe space to call and talk to someone because there's so many people out there that don't have anyone or don't think they have anyone or they don't want to burden other people with their problems because they recognize everyone has problems and knowing that there's one person who benefited from 988 from calling and it has in ways bettered your life changed your life you're still here to this day you're still working through things on a regular basis that should be an empowerment to so many more people to utilize that resource it's a good starting point into the health journey. 100%. Yeah. And, you know, like the whole mission of, of the podcast is to really normalize how we talk about mental health. Because if we just start sharing our, our stories and our journeys, then somebody doesn't feel so terrified and lonely in their own journey, right? They may not have, act, they may feel so uncomfortable picking up their phone and talking to somebody. Listen, just listen to the podcast. Yeah. Because we've yeah. had so many awesome guests on that have shared their journeys and given us some tips and tricks and tools and things that we would have never thought about. And maybe even if we'd, we'd call the, the crisis line, right, we may not have gotten that information. But like, I will tell you, life really is worth living. And life on this side of depression is a thousand times better than it was on the other side. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I think that people have this fear behind reaching out to any crisis outline, whether it's 988 or any of the other ones that are out there, because there's so many. But they have this fear that if they call and they say, I'm feeling suicidal, or they say, I think I want to kill myself, or they say, I just cut myself, any of these kinds of things, right? That immediately somebody's going to show up on their doorstep and take them to the mental hospital. And I'm not going to speak for all of the other crisis hotlines out there because I can't, obviously. I don't know what they do. But for the one that I am passionate about, 90 Day, I can say for certainty, that's not something we want to do. That's not something we're going to try to do. What we're going to try to do is see what helps you in that moment. And if that's talking, we're going to talk. But if you agree that you need help, then guess what? We're going to find you that help. And if that means we need to send someone to you, then we will find some way of doing that. There are so many states and cities now that are utilizing mobile crisis units. And with a 988 database, we can, you know, ask you some information, not all of it, but some information. And we can say, OK, this mobile crisis unit is in an area near you 
They come to your house. They'll talk with you. That doesn't mean they're going to take you to the hospital. That just means someone's going to physically come to your house and try to help you in that moment. If you decide you want to go to the hospital, then they will help you with that. But just because you call does not mean it's going to end with you in a hospital. Yeah, yeah. that's good to know there's options for them. There are. For anybody who calls. Yeah. There are. And I can tell you, Susie, because of 988, it gave me the voice. You guys helped me get my voice back so I could at least tell my wife what was going on because she had no idea, none. Well, Dirty Skittles didn't know. My my friends didn't know. Nobody knew. Mm-hmm. But it gave me a voice. The very next day I was in therapy and then I started sharing my journey on social media because mm-hmm. I didn't want people to feel as fucking terrified as I felt myself. Yeah. Right? And... Mm-hmm. Then I would call and talk to Dirty Skittles every day and we would laugh. So my my healer truly was going to therapy and laughing. I feel you on the laughing part. That's the only way I get through every single day. (laughs) If we would have recorded some of those earlier conversations, they were so good. So good. I am a person who like as many times a day as I can say, that's what she said. I will. Yeah. (laughs) So I I can never get the timing right. I never get it right. I'm like, is it now? Is it now? And then I'll say it. Oh, I am so like on it. Like if I say something and you missed the moment where you could said it to me, I'm gonna be like, that's what she said. (laughs) I'm gonna do it to my own self because you missed your moment. But I'm thinking, (laughs) and my son, he's 16, and so he does the same thing. Like he's spot on with it. So if we're not laughing all day, like what is? I mean, what is happening? Like laughter is literally some of the absolute best medicine in the whole world. And I think that people often kind of forget that, like when they are so super depressed. They actually don't have that ability to like laugh because they have no yeah. emotion, they have no feeling like they're just like, like in a zombie state. And I have m- on many occasions when I'm talking with callers, I'll be like, okay, what things do you find joy in? Oh, nothing. Okay. Well, do you like comedy? Do you like laughing? I don't know. Okay. Well, how do you feel about maybe pulling up YouTube and watching insert comedian right or how do you feel about turning on the office because obviously I love it (laughs) or you know something like that like giving yourself permission to like watch something that's funny and then laugh a little or you know things like that and sometimes people take my ideas and sometimes they don't but you know on the moments where they do and they have that moment to just laugh or if we're in conversation and I'm talking to them and maybe I randomly said something that I didn't realize was going to be funny, but they thought it was funny. And they're laughing. <laughs> and by the end of it, we're both laughing and we're having this silly banter back and forth. And they're like, wow, I feel so much better. And I'm like, oh, yes, yeah, see, laughter. Yeah. yeah. Laughter, yeah. so much better than crying, laughing. It just, it opens up so much within you and just it increases your serotonin and your endorphins. And I, I'm telling you, there's times that Dirty Skittles and I talk and man, we are just, we're people. We can just laugh at our own pain is what she means. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I do that to myself regularly. So I feel that some of my yeah. about my own self, like sometimes makes people uncomfortable when I'm laughing about my own tragedies, right? <laughs> now, I that I'm like in this never ending story of my, you know, self like is just depleting. And I just like my body's deteriorating. Like I make these yeah. jokes and they make people so uncomfortable. I'm like, oh, dang, you don't get it. <laughs> didn't make to me didn't mean to make you uncomfortable <laughs> meanwhile you told you rex and i were dying laughing we're like oh yeah. this is great right? i'm like i just gotta find my people who are on my deranged humor level okay? right 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 literally it's all right i'm driving the short quest to hell so you know it, it's all good <laughs> back there with you don't worry yeah. about it. don't worry and, and i counsel all of you while we're there it's cool. yeah i'm gonna serve margaritas and maybe like some thc soda and you know what, whatever you need you know it's gonna That's be the enjoyable only way be running is if it's after a margarita bus heck yeah <laughs> right yeah <laughs> quite That's running really good i'm gonna right die <laughs> I'd have to wear a bra. No, we're not running. (laughs) That's like the worst. It is. Every part of my day is not doing that anymore. (laughs) Right, exactly. (laughs) 
Man. Yeah. This has been great, Susie. Yeah. I love this conversation. I love your story. I love what you're doing. I thank you yeah. for just even absolutely pursuing this line of work and being there for people that you may never meet ever. Right. But just being there yeah. when they need you the most is awesome. So thank you for what you oh, do. Well, I, I would say like it's my pleasure, but like that, that's so weird. Just Chick fil A <laughs> is in my head 24-7. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's the way you're supposed to end that when somebody like right. you. <laughs> but I love, yeah. I, I genuinely do like love the work that I do. And I know that sounds nuts because how could you love doing that? But I genuinely love that moment where when I'm connecting with a caller who is at their worst, whatever moment that looks like for them, Right. And at the end of it, we've established they're going to be safe for the rest of that day. Doesn't have to be forever. Just today, in this moment, after our conversation, today you're going to be okay. We'll worry about tomorrow when tomorrow comes, right? That moment is just like, I feel so grateful that I got to be a part of that person's one day journey into the next steps. And I just love my job. So, so Susie, I do have one question. So if any of our listeners are interested in working in like a crisis center, what would like be their like first steps? Sure. So obviously to, you know, figure out what is available in your state. So like the state that I live in, we are one of the top four largest 98 centers in the whole country. In the state that I live in, we service about 80% of the state. So we're the fourth largest in the nation, 80% of just our state. So we get a lot of calls. So what I would recommend is seeing what counseling or crisis counseling centers or hotlines or whatever is available in your state. So if you want to work for like 988, for example, you would go to the 988lifeline.org, I think is the way. Yeah, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. 988lifeline.org. <laughs> yes, 988lifeline.org. Mm-hmm. And then you would click on a tab that says become a part of 988 or volunteer or something of that nature. And then drop down to find your state. And then it will tell you all of the different facilities that 988 works with. So uh, like there are different organizations that 988 affiliates themselves with that organization. And so you're working together for whatever that state looks like, if that makes sense. So then you would see what openings they have and then you could apply. Now as a 988 crisis counselor in my state, like I said, you have to have a bachelor's degree. I'm not saying it's like that everywhere. You might not. And it is a paid position. So it's not a volunteer position. You're, you do get paid to do that job. So I think sometimes that's important for people to know because when they call, they think we just are volunteers and like, we don't care. But no, we 100% care. Like this is our job. I think, oh my God, I love this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. Oh, this and was such a good conversation. You are more than welcome to ask questions about the line, what anything you want. Like, if I can tell you, I will tell you. If I can't, I'll let you know. But if you have more questions, I'm happy to try to answer them. I don't have any. I mean, this just, this has been just a beautiful episode. Yeah. It's a beautiful, like, I'm just in awe. I'm in awe. So, yeah, me too. I genuinely thank you for what you do because that's, it's not, I cannot, I would imagine it's not easy well, to do this. No. No, it's definitely not easy. And I, I will say this, like there are there have been times when people have called and they have had maybe a negative experience, right, with the person that they were talking to. And what I can say to that is if you call and you don't like the voice you're talking to, you don't like the fact that it might be male versus female, you don't like the mm-hmm. energy that they're bringing, there are a couple of things I would recommend. Number one, feel the vibe out of who you're talking to, right? Number two, you don't have to give us any identifying information about yourself at all whatsoever. Number three, we're going to ask you direct questions when you call. We want to know, are you feeling suicidal today? Have you done anything to harm yourself? 
And have you ever in the past tried to kill yourself? And we ask these because we need to know what direction we're going to take this conversation, how we plan to help you or navigate the conversation, because we want to make sure that we're giving you what you need in that moment. And by knowing those answers, we can help you better. So when you call and you answer those questions, whether it was yes and yes, that does not mean we have anything to identify you. So Mm -hmm. you're not going to send someone out to you just because you said yes, right? So if you are not feeling the vibe, you can politely say, hey, listen, I'm going to call back in and talk to someone else. And you can hang up and call right back in. You don't even have to politely say it. You can just be like, click. Yeah, you just don't want to say anything. You know what I mean? Like, if you are not enjoying the, the, the flow of the conversation, the only reason why I say, like, say that you're hanging up is because that counselor might get real worried about you and they might be like, oh no, is this something that like, I should be worried about this person, right? Because that is a thing we do when people hang up, we do worry a little bit, right? Right. Saying like, hey, not feeling this, I'm gonna let you go, hang up, it's fine. Then you can call in and talk to someone else. Shoot, you can a dozen times and get you know, different people. You don't have to just talk to that one person. So if the vibe is not feeling good or you're having a negative experience, call back in and talk to someone else. It might be yeah. a better experience that time and it's okay. Yeah. And, and I, I was just going to say the, the crisis line, it's not just for people who are feel suicidal. It's for any type of like mental crisis that you're going through. It's, they will help you. 100 percent and you're talking to somebody that has been there done that fucking so thankful for that opportunity because i'm here absolutely and and it's such an amazing resource and for any of our listeners that are in canada you can use that same phone number 988 and then if you are outside of the country i saw this on gray's anatomy the other night there is a, you can contact findahelpline.org and they will find, you You can use that to find somebody within your own country to get help. Yes. And we also, for people who don't like to talk, you can also text or you can chat like on a computer with someone as well. And that way, I mean, that conversation sometimes is a really long one because it's hard to flow when you're texting or typing but it's still an option for you and if there's parents out there with kids like please recommend this resource to your children I don't want to scare people but I've spoken to dozens of young adults the youngest one I ever spoke to was nine so like just because you're not seeing it doesn't mean they're not feeling it and giving them a free resource that they can call and talk to whenever they need is so beneficial to them. And for the people that call and prank the line, it's rude. Don't do it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. God, Susie. Thank you so much. I, I just, I love everything about you. You're such great energy. Fill my head yeah. a little bigger. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, that's how okay. it works. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. Yeah. And congrats on graduating again. Yeah. So awesome. I am so excited. I have an interview next weekend for the master's program that I applied for. And I'm really hoping that they accept me because I'm really looking forward to being able to pursue this further. I have a lot of hopes and dreams inside of my head on what I would like to do in my future. So I'm hoping we get there. But until then, I'm so grateful for working for this line, episode two. And I recorded that ending and I sent it to all my coworkers and I was like, be prepared. The- <laughs> yes. <laughs> because we take so many calls. Like my center in a 24 hour period usually takes over 700 calls. Yeah. Wow. In a 24 hour time span. So I was like, y'all be prepared because it's wow. going to be. You just put it out there on a huge platform. <laughs> yeah. So glad that they did that because that means so many more people now know about the line 
I've listened to even artists at the end of their set or in the middle of their set talk about 988. So like the word is getting out there. And if people think that they might want to do this work, please apply. We need you just as much as you need us. Okay. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. All right. Nice. Thank you. Thank Hi, you. Hi, all. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I'm G Rex. And I'm Dirty Skittles. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. We'd love to listen to your feedback. We can't do this without you guys. It's okay to be not okay. Just make sure you're talking to someone.